don't ask about the mask. Uh, it, it doesn't flatter me in the slightest. I think it's even affecting the way I speak. This is just a shitty promotional tactic used uh, so that you can watch my one or two tweets when I'm watching Raw today. And possibly Friday. One thing I've noticed, and this is something that someone pointed out to me, is that it's only girls that have the special snowflake syndrome. I didn't realize that at first because the guys around this hood are pretty effeminate sometimes, and they may suffer from it too. But generally, almost entirely, it's a female thing. On Facebook today, I was I posted that I was watching some nostalgia critic videos. And then I wanted to check some nostalgia chick videos, and she was reviewing something the critic never reviewed. I thought it would be somewhat the same thing, but with a female. And I was dead wrong. All she did throughout the video was cry bigotry. In fact, that's the style for most of her reviews, at least for this year. I wouldn't know about the other years. But generally, her style seems different from when she's in crossovers. All she does is say, uh, this is a terrible way for a female character to be involved with, uh, this character is a bigot, this character is racist, uh, this is kind of sick, um, this is how this should be implemented, and it essentially, I wouldn't agree with her, I'm not sure if I should agree with her or not, because... Maybe it's just her being a special snowflake, and I wouldn't notice it if I watched a review or feel uncomfortable if I actually watched a movie or a video game or whatever she's reviewing, or a television show. Maybe it's not that bigoted or disgusting or difficult to watch, and maybe I do find the characters likable, but I wouldn't tell because she's doing this special snowflake thing. And when I'm thinking about that, I instantly realize that, ideologically speaking, if a female's opinion isn't latched on to a male's strictly, you know, an alpha male's, then she's going to be fooled into trying to be a special snowflake. And it's a good good goy tactic. It's a good way to make some puppets, some people that'll succumb to your viewpoints and things of that nature. I really need to cut my hair if I want to wear a mask, yet it makes me look dorky in other ways too, so this mask is probably not meant for my face. Probably meant for someone who has a smaller head. I mean, I can already feel my bangs over both my lips. It's not very comforting. And plus, I look like I have some killer eye hair. And then when I think about all these feminist groups like FEMA that are actually a bunch of special snowflakes that don't even know that they're in a patriarchal group, it is a patriarchy, it's a nigga that's just doing this see tits. I'm thinking, this is a good way to manipulate chicks. And I find that disturbing. The special snowflake instinct is very easy to exploit. The easiest to do this is with feminism because females are special snowflakes, so what would appeal to that group are the topic of females. I mean, feminism doesn't necessarily improve the lives of females, but it's, if you're that kind of special snowflake, a male feminist tend to explore feminism in a different way. It's not in this, I'm interesting because I'm a male feminist. It's more of a this is my ideology, this is my belief, this is what I think will actually help the world to make it a better place. 
the power shift, the quality, it'll make the world much, much better. So it has that sort of retarded pragmatism to it. That I'm trying to be practical, but I don't understand practicality and I don't get the facts. Or the facts that I'm getting are pulled from a narrative and used in a narrative that is severely flawed and has several holes in it. But if a girl gets out of a feminist phase, she's going to be a special snowflake about other things. I notice that a lot of the white nationalist chicks I know tend to be very American Renaissance-esque. They tend to look up to Jared Taylor as some type of hero. Uh, this is anti-white. And it's a good way to appeal to them. Like, in the cool kids group, I know there's one chick that's like that. I know a bunch of people like that. And it's a nice instinct to exploit. The problem is white nationalism is only a good idea on paper since we should be moving on to more national identity and western civilization really does depend on white people they're the ones that created it, they're the ones that are the essence of it that soul that searches out to explore but there is a difference between mythologizing whites and mythologizing western civilization and white nationalism doesn't do a good job of mythologizing either one because it becomes this victim thing and it doesn't take that advantage of the Imperium, it doesn't take advantage of the mythology of Christianity sometimes it even goes against it and of course ethno-nationalism does cover up most of those flaws yet that also has its flaws because it goes on ecological doom-based method and pan-secessionism based on ethnicity is worse than with race. It's not realistic. You need some form of dominating the accidentals. The little foreigners. Cause they're always going to exist unless you live in a bubble. Moving on to another subject. If they're not in that, then they're going to be with the Orini Manosphere, and they're going to be the Womanosphere. The women that are fighting, fighting to get back into the kitchen. And they behave differently as well. Uh, they tend to be, I guess, special snowflakes when it comes to issues of Israel, I notice. Like, Israel, I mean, they act like Israel is this total victim to the Arabs. Where sometimes the good goes in reverse, it's the Arabs are being victimized by Israel. Sometimes it's that they're being special snowflakes to races that aren't their own, too. Whether it's Jew, Arab, Black, Hispanic, Asian... If it's the latter, then they're probably no taku, but they don't really play it off as that. So that wouldn't be a good dichotomy. Anime should be as big as Disney, man. Miyazaki kicks Walt Disney's creative ass. Or anything that corporation is doing right now. Which I wouldn't disagree with. Uh, Miyazaki is very innovative and influential and a lot of things that I grew up liking are respond Miyazaki kind of holds the inspiration for that shit so good on him mate regardless as people that are can create a far right movement that succeeds we're gonna have to learn to tap into this and maybe remove it 
or use it in a way that's to our advantage because the way it's being used right now it's terrible and these are only a handful of examples I could throw up there's also the anti-GMO crowd, the Starbucks liberals who are more associated with the economic side of it and being an economic special snowflake And I just straight up don't like that shit. Because it makes things a lot diffic more difficult on an intellectual level. And of course on an intellectual level, you might argue with me, do females really play a role in that? Of course they do. Of course they do, because they're a very motivating factor in all of this. They play a role, it's just not the same role. I'm not going to close the video right now, obviously, but... If I'm going to explain what is the special snowflake, it's essentially someone that thinks that they're... that they're all essentially should be held on to the same standard, yet they're all different, they're all unique. It's the, uh, how come black people can't, can't do this, but white people can? Or how come white people can't do this, yet black people can? How come Arabs can do this, but Jews can't? And how come Jews can do this, yet Arabs can't? How come males can do this, but females can't? How come females can do this, but males can't? How come... Christians can do this, but pagans can't? How come pagans can't do this, but Christians can't? Or, oh, I think it fucked that one up, but you get the dynamic. The world doesn't operate on the same standard, but if it did, I'm sure their opinions hold some validity. And with that being said, it just shows that multiculturalism and all these standards are poisonous to the female mind especially because they operate in that mentality if multiple people have multiple standards and they can only see one sometimes even if they claim to be relativistic what does that say? it says we're fucked especially now so shout out to the females out there uh, Yeah, I love females. And I don't mean that in a perverted way. I mean, females are shit, man. Like, chick flicks are my favorite genre of film. Well, one of them. Uh, the Spice Girls are one of my favorite all-girl bands, besides L7. Uh, Hard has a lot of females in it. Uh, there's a lot of all female fronting bands that I like. What would be my favorite female fronted rock band? Uh, Waterface? No, Waterface isn't well known. Boa, that's not well known. A lot of fucking shit, man. Although Paramore does suck. Hmm. Who was that female that was in all those, like, 90s thriller films? Uh, yeah, she was cool. It was that blonde chick. Uh, she was with Denzel Washington at one film where she was running away from a bunch of guys that were trying to kill her. Yeah, she's she's the shit, nigga. Uh, that chick that reviews anime, she's way better than Nostalgia Critic. Uh, Jesu Otaku, yeah, she's the shit, nigga. Uh, Good. Nicki Minaj when she raps, okay, she's shit, but when she says those badass one-liners, yeah, that's the shit, nigga. Uh, oh, yeah. Awesome.